with any business and then also with any relationship, there are audits that need to be taken place. Lacey and I, we have specific meetings that are designated for our different lanes that we're running in, right? So that really removes your emotion out of it. And then it becomes, hey, how do we both want to fix this? Or how do we both want to grow together? And thank you so much for joining me, my friend. Uh, you know, I've listened to your podcast. I've been following you on, on LinkedIn. You're pretty big there. But uh, just for the people who don't know what's going on, feel free to introduce yourself, like everything you have going on, your podcast, your your businesses. I know you got a couple. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Nathan Bird. And once again, Dalton, thank you for having me on this podcast. I know what it takes in order to you know, set up your guests and to edit the podcast and to disperse that content. And it's a lot of work. So, you know, you need to have respect where respect is due. So first and foremost, thank you. Thank um, you. Secondly, yes, uh, I really enjoy business, but I also enjoy building relationships with people. That is at the foundation of what I do, what I believe in. And there's a lot of ways that my wife and I work together to help people. We help people with their health, we help people with their business and we help people with their relationships in a few different avenues that we've created uh, that we continue to build on. We have Treasure North, which is our high end exclusive retreats for entrepreneurial couples. Then we have hybrid athlete training, which is an app. And so it's a nationwide health and wellness program where you have a membership where you can be a part and learn and also connect with a community of supportive individuals on an app. And uh, thirdly, I have a business consulting company called Growth Bounce, where we take your company and help you grow in exponential bounces. <laughs> That's sweet. Well, so man, you got a lot, especially with like, um, you know, you're, you're in the your entrepreneurial couples. I, I, I think that's, I think that's fun. Uh, to kind of talk about because like, yeah, you got, you got everything you work from couples, athletes, everything like that. But when you're talking about, I think it's interesting because there are some of my listeners who like to go over how to work with their spouse and really like, you know, your spouse in a business, but really like any kind of partnership, right? Like, do you, do you feel like there's some, I, I guess what, what I want to ask is like, what are the main similarities between like working with your spouse and working with like maybe just a, a business partner. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe like, what, what are some of like the big differences that people who are working with their spouse might need to focus on more than just an outside partner? Well, as you know, emotions play a large factor um, as well as dedication. So there's two different things. Number one, it's really laying out your expectations and understanding for any type of relationship, whether that be your marriage or whether that be, your, you know, your significant other, um, but the translations are all across the board, right? We've got business relationships where, that we're continuing to create, but also to nurture. And a lot of times we're, we're sometimes so focused on creating the relationship that we'll focus on the nurturing of that relationship for a long-term strategic approach, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I believe, uh, you know, understanding and listening and being curious to your significant other will play a large factor in helping you go for a long period of time. So how is it different? It really isn't too different other than your deep emotional attachment that you may have with your spouse or your significant other. But then again, when you're in a business partnership, you you like that person, but you also have a common goal and purpose to develop your business to go up the long term, right? Which if you look in a marriage, a marriage is a covenant relationship where you want to take it the long term way, right? We want to go till death do us part. So within a business, we say either we're going to exit. So we plan for exit and then we reverse that strategy. And then in addition to a marriage, we have a commitment for long-term. So then we reverse engineer that. So to answer your question, there's, you know, there's emotion that's connected, there's communication and then expectations that must be set. You know, this is something we all know, but sometimes it's more difficult than not to implement those. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I think when you're talking about um, 
businesses and relationships, there is a lot of similarities, but I, but I'm also, I'm always curious, like with people who get into business with their spouse spouses, if it's, if there's some maybe extra tension, because like, you know, what, what is that statistic? I don't know if it's still true, but it used to be at least like most, you know, a big percentage of divorces were about money. Yes. And so I'm wondering, like, I feel like there's that extra tension. I mean, obviously when you have like an outside business partner, money's a big deal, but, but, you know, I've had business partners where like, we just, we sat down one day and we were like, Hey, you know, we've achieved everything we wanted to achieve. This isn't working anymore. Like, you know, shake hands and and we're out of there. And I, I mean, like for the most part, you don't, that's not really the case with marriage. Right. And so I just always feel like maybe there's some, like, do you, I mean, do you work with couples through that? Like maybe that unconscious subconscious tension that that might uh, exist sure that's a good question i know uh, for Lacey and i we have specific meetings that are designated for our different lanes that we're running in right so we have our financial meetings and how i look at it is you know with any business and then also with any relationship there are audits that need to be taken place And once you have those proper expectations of audits that are going to happen within your relationship and also within your business, you know, say, for example, your business has, you know, we've got finance and marketing and sales. And, you know, uh, if it's a product business, then you have manufacturing and distribution. And then you have, you know, those are like the key factors of what you would do within a business audit. Now, within a relationship audit, you have, well, where is my you know, where are our, our physical intimacy? Where is that? You know, and then we have uh, financial and then we have, you know, a plethora of ways that we can take and look at our marriage from an objective point of view. So I think that is really important as a couple that you truly can separate the two, but then have those, those, you know, understood conversations that can bring both into a scenario where, Hey, listen, this isn't about you. This isn't about our emotions. We understand that that's solid, but we need to go through this audit. So (laughs) that really removes your emotion out of it. And then it becomes, Hey, how do we both want to fix this? Or how do we both want to grow together? So that's where your expectations of a long-term vision come in. So then you guys can both as a collective come together and reach whatever goals you have throughout your audits. Mm, I like that. So you have like your own, you know, you said your own audits there and you had, and it sounded like you said there was a few different types of audits that you do. You have a few different meetings that you have with your spouse. Do you feel like that's, do you feel like, um, with those meetings f- first, you know, cause I kind of want to dive into like how you like how to find success with your spouse in business. So, um, and so this will be the last question before I kind of dive into like how you got to this point, but but with your spouse, um, you know, you also mentioned like expectations. And so a funny thing for me is like, I I'm pretty stoic in my beliefs and I'm pretty, you know, um, like real, real in my beliefs in the sense that like expectations are a great way to like be unhappy quickly. And so how do you, I mean, like, how do you balance those expectations? Um, you know, when inevitably something goes wrong, like it might not be it might not be catastrophic, but yeah. somebody's going to let somebody down in a, yeah, in a marriage. Absolutely. Right? That's where empathy comes in. So you have to mm-hmm. understand, and that's where seeking to understand comes into the into the picture, right? Mm-hmm. So if I were to look at you, Dalton, and you know, I had expectations for uh, you know what you're going to do and how perfect it's going to be, then of course I'm going to be let down. But then sure. if I understand from a, a humanistic standpoint that you will make mistakes and it is inevitable. And if I have empathy towards you and then I seek to understand as to why that happened, Mm -hmm. it will stop all argument, really, because you are sitting there and I'm sitting here with you and being like, hey, Dalton, it's completely fine. (laughs) I've made mistakes as well. So let's try to work through this together. Right. Yeah. So it's never it's never, hey, I'm up here on this pedestal and you're down here. So if you continue to build together on the same level, then it can be very instrumental in helping you with success within your partnerships, with your relationships, with your businesses, things like that. So that empathy and then seeking to understand is crucial. Yeah. I like that though. That I, 
I like how you put that. So, so we'll table that for a second because I kind of skimmed over. I got really excited. Like I get really excited when I do these interviews and maybe you find that way, find yourself in that position too, when you're doing inter- interviews on the founders odyssey podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes <laughs> it's difficult because um, one of the, the guests will have a topic where I get super excited to answer a question <laughs> or to ask them something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> It goes away or they are super fast in their answer. And then I'm unable to get to that question. You know? <laughs> well, and, so and, I not, and yeah, like I get so excited and we just dive deep and I miss the whole structure of like, all right, hold on. We got to figure out who Nathan is, right? We got to hear Nathan's story. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I want to want to dive into boss is like, um, tell us like how you started this. I mean, obviously, yeah. um, you know, you're an advisor in a few businesses, you've yes, got to figure yourself, you you know, you've been doing this for a while, but like, is this something that you always wanted to do or is it something that kind of fell into your lap or a little bit yeah. of both? From, uh, from second grade, I can remember my grandfather. So he was, uh, and still is a farmer and we have various, uh, we had some land when I was younger and we were always going to auctions and buying equipment. Mm-hmm. So as a young kid, I saw that there was transactions taking place. Mm-hmm. I, I actually wanted to be an auctioneer because I thought it was so amazing <laughs> because this guy was literally standing on this pedestal and he was communicating with the crowd. So ever since I was a kid, I just, I saw myself speaking on stage. I saw myself controlling an audience, right. In a positive yeah. way. Right? right. And, and then also transacting through that process. Mm-hmm. Oh, as a kid, yes, absolutely. This was super at a super young age, second grade. I remember I would carry a briefcase to elementary school. Okay. I was the only kid that brought a briefcase (laughs) to to elementary school. And I know that was, I didn't care because I just knew that I'm going to be a businessman. I'm going to be a businessman. And I knew, you know, of course you don't know what what you, you don't know when you're a kid, but I also knew that I wanted to build strong relationships because that's how deals were done. So I looked up to my grandfather in that way. Um, and I saw, you know, all the land that we had and the ways that we were, you know, kind of conducting business in that way. So that sparked my interest as a kid, you know, and then got me, obviously, you know, we can go further forward to (laughs) high school and, uh, when in, when in high school, um, you know, everybody does the lawn, the lawn machine where I was just pushing it door to door um, within my neighborhood, of course. And I didn't grow it to, hey, I had friends that I was calling and whatnot. It was just I knew that if I were to go and get, you know, get a customer and then provide a service, then there was an exchange of value. And that was right. something that I learned at a, a young age as well. Um, then seeing within my family. Uh, we had we had uh, created a direct sales business my dad was in, and he'd been in the industry for many years. So seeing how uh, sales at a young age, you know, where we had constant people coming <laughs> over to the house, we had large groups of people that, you know, he was presenting to, and at a young age, at right. 12 years old, I saw that as well, like, oh, wow. I want to learn how to create value because that's in essence what it all came down to me in sales and understanding how to provide a solution to somebody's problem. Sales to me is like the answer to everything. You know, I got into yeah. starting to listen to obviously Zig Ziglar and uh, Les Brown and Tony Robbins and all these uh, Jim Rohn and you know, self-development <laughs> quote unquote gurus. But then in my life at that time, I was also playing basketball at a high level in high school. So basketball and sports played a major role in my life as to, you know, setting goals, going through physical adversities, right? Through just crazy, like super line sets and uh, creating co- coherence within teams, right? Yeah. And understanding personalities and understanding skill sets. And, you know, cause I've got a shooter on the right, I've got a post inside, I've got various ways right that people gel within a team so that translates very quickly to systems and business culture that's created a mission a goal uh what is the championship and where are we going so you know it's trans and then i went and played college you know college basketball and and did that but you know yeah 
Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, dude. That's cool. So um, always wanted to be a public speaker. I think, by the way, I think auctioneers are like really interesting. I had a friend who was an auctioneer and I was like, how do you even talk that fast? And at, at one point, and like auctioneer, auctioneering kind of transfer, like translated into sort of like a, you know, a show at that point, because they were, you used to be, they had to talk that fast, but now, you know, generally you don't have to talk that. Right. But they still do because like, that's the spirit of it. Right. Like that's why you go to an auction. Right? Yes. Yeah, it's, like, it's part entertainment and the show. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of leverage in understanding how to speak from stage, how to sell from stage, the psychology of how to actually speak in general. Um, yeah. You know, and those are things that I'm really was obsessed in um, yeah. and understanding and continuing to understand better just the overall psychology of, uh, people as well as the art of persuasion. And then, you know, providing, like I said, the most value for yeah. uh, what, what well, your product is. I mean, I know you like sales is everything, right. But like, um, and, and I totally agree. Like I'm a sales guy, um, like my whole career, but what got you, what, what, what clicked for you? How did you learn that lesson of like sale? This is it. Sales is everything. Like, well, especially in a business, right? Like if you're not selling, you're, you're not, surviving essentially. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I had a sales job with T-Mobile. I was selling phones and, yeah. um, you know, I was in a, a mall kiosk and that was when, and then at the same time I was involved in a direct sales uh, company as well. So mm-hmm. I had uh, that going on. And then I, at the same time I was in uh, downtown Portland, we were building a company oh. called, <laughs> yeah, we were building a company called um, Black Key Marketing where we would sell uh, digital frames at the point of sale for companies to advertise their marketing. And what I realized is the potential possibilities for a unlimited cap. And I mean, a lot of people say that, but if you have value and then you can articulate that to somebody in a way that really can help them, that's sales. Yeah. You know, and that's a very broad yeah. statement, but you could put a product or service in place of what I just said. And you have a skill set that can be taken anywhere and everywhere in your life. Right. Right yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like you had to sell you, you have to sell your podcast to people, right? right? Who you are, what you do and how your podcast is just a little bit different to attract the right customer. So your verbiage has to be correct. The people on your podcast, they need to align with your mission and vision, Right. Right. So, um, so yeah, you're selling all the time and understanding humans is crucial. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And I think, um, yeah, the biggest part of selling is, is like just what you said, it's just understanding people because I learned a long time ago, like value is in the, is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder, right? Like, um, you gotta like find out what makes people tick. And so like I did, I read all the books, like all the persuasion psychology books and, and you brought up empathy earlier and that's it for me. Like the psychology of sales is real easy. It's like, it's empathy. It's like, do you care about someone else more than you? And like, and do you care about them more than a sale? Do you care about them more than like your numbers and all those things? Because if you do like, it, it will flow a lot easier. Well, look, you and I have both experienced a salesman, quote unquote, (laughs) who just don't care. They don't care about you. They don't care. They don't, they don't even care. Okay. And (laughs) they're just trying to sling their product and you can tell it's scripted. There's no, uh, there's no connection. There's no actually asking you questions to meet your needs. It's, Hey, I've got something great for you. And then they start doing feature benefit, feature benefit, right? And then there's the either or close. And then there's all these (laughs) random things that, you know, there's a lot of psychology. There's NLP that we can use. We can also read body language, watch eye contact, look at different things. And then we can ask for the sale. But at the end of the day, do I feel like Dalton cares for me and what my needs are? Right. Well, I think if you develop like empathy, if you, if you truly develop like real empathy, I think all of those things come into place of like reading body language, like hearing what people are saying, like actually listening and hearing what they're saying, because you're, you're, you sound like, you know, you know, the questions that you ask are like helping them open up to you because yeah, I I think I, you know, I used to coach 
like and train. I mean, I still do, but I still train salespeople. And I'm like, and I go like, dude, um, they're, they're asking me about persuasion and influence and all of this stuff. And like 80, and I'm like, dude, you need to forget all of that. I'll show you how to sell. <laughs> go ask somebody what they care about. Yeah. And then start from there. For problems to shut your mouth. Cause you'll yeah. hear a season, a seasoned salesman will sit there and just ask questions. Yeah. They don't say anything. And then all of a sudden right. they'll just come up with solutions. You know? Yeah. I yeah. just ask tons of questions. I'm the why guy, you know, yeah. just be the why guy everywhere you go. Yeah. What yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I love that. So, so you, you got to this point, right? And now you're, um, and I'm curious if you, if we're talking about like how to work well with your spouse in a business, cause I feel like a Absolutely. lot of people are doing that. Right. Um, what, what got you into coaching couples, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, so there's a huge couples. story behind that. My wife and I, Lacey. Um, so we lived in Alaska for a little while, both her and I got our certifications to be uh, health and wellness coaches. Right. Yeah. And I set out to be uh, a trainer to the stars in San Diego, California, <laughs> and Lacey also had her certification as a wellness coach, right? So yeah. um, I, I ended up doing that. I got in a few magazines. I had some whatever, you know, I coached some pretty high-level executives with their health and whatnot. And then Lacey was doing the same thing. We were yeah. on a great path. Um, during that time, I met somebody who had, uh, he owned a steel company. And within that steel industry, I, I wanted to sell steel, I was like, wow, these deals are huge, you know, multi-million dollar deals where, you know, we can move large amounts of pipe, we could move large amounts of steel, and I could be the salesman to do so um, because I saw that he was doing really well and I actually trained him for a little while with his health and wellness. So I ended up just taking a job uh, with him to help him build his uh, section in San Diego. And, uh, it was, you know, his in essence company and I had, you know, direct access to the CEO, which was nice. But, um, with that came, it came some stress and it also came, you know, let's go, it's on to the next deal basically. So for me, it was about, Hey, how can we close that big deal? Oh, I've got another deal. I've got another meeting, Lacey. I've got another meeting. So what that, what that did is it pushed her further, further away from what really mattered was our relationship. You know, Mm -hmm. I started to see some success and, and then also she was seeing success in her industry, but we were separating as a couple. So then there was no success in our relationship. So we ended up separating for one year and two months. And during that time was one of the worst times of our life, both Lacey and I. And, you know, we were away from each other. We truly loved each other. And we had actually signed divorce papers. And I had turned those uh, divorce papers into the office. And they said, you forgot one signature, sir. So I said, okay, well, um, I grabbed the papers. I didn't want to go back and see Lacey. Um, I had done a self audit once again, and I had asked myself, did, have you forgiven her? Do you love her? Uh, have you rid all anger, frustration, uh, within your life? And the answer to that question was no. So I really needed to take a second and to look back internally and then see if I really wanted to go, uh, you know, back to Lacey with a better attitude and, you know, keep in mind, I was never, you know, physically abusive or uh, emotionally or yelled loud or whatnot. It was basically just, we had come to a position in our relationship where we both needed to move on. It was almost, you know, a year and two months. And that was a very frustrating time. But then it was like, it came to this part where we had literally signed divorce papers and and she thought we were divorced. And that's another funny part of the story. But Um, I threw away the papers. I took about a week. I had some strong mentors and advisors who had helped me. My faith in God is very strong. So that was really what got us through. Um, And we had the ability to get back together and start building our relationship. It didn't happen overnight, but it happened through going to various conferences and retreats and then volunteering at different retreats. And then it's come to the position now where we've taken a stance to be the bridge and helping um, younger couples, older couples, people within business, people that have uh, maybe 
misbalanced their uh, priorities in their life. So that's yeah. where um, that's where we're so passionate about helping uh, you know people, couples. And right now we serve the entrepreneurial community because you know those are the people that we most uh, kind of vibe with at this moment. But yeah. you now that is the story. That's that's what happened, and that's what fuels our 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 passion, but also our purpose. And you know, if if anyone gets anything out of this, it's basically. You need to look in your life and you need to look at the adversities that you go through. Some people coward and they don't take the next step further and push forward and then help people through those adversities. Sometimes they just sit and say, oh, woe is me. And they don't make the next step forward to then impact people from their, you know, whatever they've gone through. And today is a challenge and hopefully inspiration for you out there to go and and take that next step. Yeah, I think... That's a, that's an incredible story. I mean, you also talk about just like empathy with, with your, with your spouse in that case. Right. And like empathy with, with yourself, because in my thing is like, empathy is not like this woo woo, you know, whatever. Right. Like it's very like, um, like good empathy allows you to set like really good boundaries. It take, it helps you take a really good look at yourself because like you can, you can be like the whole point of empathy is like being real with yourself and with other people and like actually seeing things as they are and not as you think they are. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Preconceived notions. Uh, they'll, yeah. That'll kill you as well. You know, yeah. assumptions, things like that. That's where that right. honest, open conversation, authentic connection. That's where a lot of times within relationships we have, we have actually stuffed various things in areas of our life that haven't been addressed. So we have yeah. trauma, we have shame, we have various things that have been brought on to us, even from childhood. And a lot of those things, they come up within your relationships. Now, yeah. you know, and I'm talking about every relationship, you know, right. oh, that one time that you felt abandoned when you were 10 years old by, you know, such and such, that cannot be overlooked. Mm. And if it is not addressed, then you can't do anything about it. And then you don't know why you're acting as, as you are acting because you haven't quite addressed the deeper rooted shame or trauma that's gone through your life. And there's a lot of various traumas out there, right? So there's financial traumas that people have, there's physical traumas, there's, you know, just a plethora of, of various things. And yeah. if you don't know, or you can't uncover that, then you don't know how to address it in the midst of a relationship. So then you become very, you actually yeah. become more frustrated because you're on this quote unquote cycle of craziness, they call it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and and you continue because as humans, we are, are habitual creatures, whether it's good habit or bad habit, we continue to go into these loops, right? right. And, you know, neural pathways and whatnot. So anyway, I digress. Yeah. No, that, no, it makes a lot of sense. And if you're looking, so, and if you're working with your spouse, I mean, and, and you don't have some of these, I guess, like these checks and balances in place, because here's the thing, like, um, you know, I mentioned it earlier. It's like, it's like, um, if you don't have some of your stuff, like worked out yourself, you have these subconscious things that just boil up that you didn't even know about. Right. Because, because like all of these stressors can bring stuff up that, that you thought was taken care of, or you didn't even realize you had. Right. Yep. And can, and can get brought up. So in your case, like in this case, right. Um, so we have like two main listeners. I feel like I have listeners who are in business with their, with their spouses. I also have listeners who are like really dedicated to their work. Um, and maybe their spouse is, you know, maybe they're just like, maybe they, their spouse has a nine to five, maybe they're a stay at home parent or something like that. And like not being aligned on those goals can also cause stress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Setting your visions together. And it's so funny because uh, some of the couples we just had in our retreat in Alaska, we had a, a couple that had been married for, you know, 25 years. They have five kids. They both run businesses. And it was, it was funny because I asked the one, the one gal and I said, Hey, have you ever just actually told your spouse your goals and your visions <laughs> for your for your life? And she's like, you yeah. know what? Come to think of it, I haven't really discussed 
my dreams and, and, you know, the visions and whatnot. <laughs> and that's where having that alignment as a couple is so important, you know, yeah. to set your visions and then together reach those. Right. So one person, one person may have to go to that job or may have to do some form of sacrifice to help the other person. And then that other person has the same mindset as to, Hey, we are in this together. And I will do whatever it takes to help you achieve your vision because I know you have the same thought for me. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the same thought. And like, um, what is that? Simon Sinek, when he was talking about leaders, he wrote his book, Leaders Eat Last, right? And he talked about trust in, uh, and he was comparing, you know, our relationships with like trust and like the Navy SEALs, I think, right? Or like some, some army or some military unit like that. And uh, he said that, trust sounded like uh, when somebody was doing their job, they could say in their head that like, you know, for example, like you and I are working and like, I, if I can say, I, I know that Nathan is working as hard as me, or like, I know that he is on the same page as I am. Like that's when trust happens. Right. Yep. Well, it's who you are is who you attract. And I, <laughs> yeah. uh, I oh, truly yeah. believe that. And I enjoy having conversations with people that are uplifting because I will uplift them. Yeah. It's, as I have conversations with people that I know that are, you know, um, facetious or they're uh, <laughs> going to bring people down, it's it's difficult. And it's yeah. really energy in the room. And you've experienced it. We've all experienced it on this podcast. We've got people that really they walk into a room or they open their mouth and it's everything is, just, oh, oh gosh, or <laughs> whatever. Or this. Yeah, and, I had. Uh, yeah. I had a funny story about that. I used to, I used to work with a sales guy and he was a great salesman, but this is when I learned a few really important lessons about just teams and management in general, which is like the first one. So this guy was just really like negative all the time. And he, and he would come up to me and I would help him with his clients. And he would be like, every client that I have is a douche. And I was like, I was like, well, I, you know, and I, I checked him, right? I go, hey, look, I've been doing this longer than you have. And the people that you're describing, I like maybe have one out of every 20. Like somebody's somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed. They come talk to me and we have to deal with that. But that's not like anywhere close to the majority. And he was like, well, it is for me. And I go, well, th tell me like when you and so we got into this, this kind of deeper conversation. I was like, so tell me like what you think when you like what's going through your head when somebody asks this question or that question or you see, and he's just like, well, I just think they're ready to, you know, and it, it ended up being like his thoughts. And I was like, well, dude, yeah. If you treat people like they're going to be douchebags to you, what, what did you expect? Like yeah. you're treating you're them, you know, get, they're, you know, they're ready for that. You know, you're going to get what you give as you know, and it's, yeah. uh, you know, the things that we feed our subconscious mind continually, yeah. regardless if you're saying it out loud, those still, those intents will come out during. Absolutely. Well, during yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's like you, it's like you pull that out of people when you think like, if I expect the best out of people, then I'm going to get the best from people. Generally speaking, like it doesn't work every time, but like, generally speaking, I'm, I'm going to get that. So, and, so think about this every yeah. time that you call somebody, right. And every time that somebody calls you, this is a challenge. So it's almost, and also an observation, I would say, is immediately think of what you feel when you see somebody's name pop up on your phone. Yeah. So like if Dalton called me, our interactions have been great so far. And yeah. I would be like, oh yeah, that's, that was a guy I had, I had a great conversation with on that podcast. And we talked, you know, intimately about relationships and all that good stuff. So when you call me, I'd be like, wow, that's awesome. Pick up the phone. No problem. Yeah. But then, you know, you've got those people in your life, you know, where when they call, it's like, oh, we're talking, uh, this guy, he's going to talk <laughs> about, you know, everything that he has problems with. He's going to talk about yeah. dogs, cats and, and whatnot. But that doesn't mean you can't be there for that person. It just ma it just means that you've got to, you know, either set proper boundaries or. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, and that, yeah. And that's exactly what I tried to work with the salesman on, but he just, you know, some, some salespeople are just really just in, in their heads. You know what I mean? And that that's is another topic. <laughs> right. Well, and that's when I learned and, and we could explore it. Listen, I geek out about sales and sales management, even yeah, though so I love, like the, yeah. Oh, it's totally ego with him. But here's what I learned too about the teams, right. Is like, 
I would rather have, so he, we, that was when we were selling cars and he was like a 25 or 30 car guy. Like he was really good at selling. Um, and there's a whole nother story behind that, but on paper, he looked really good. But that's when I learned, like, I would rather have two 15 car guys that, that were like, that like mentally knew what they need, you know, like emotionally, mentally, like they were in the game, you know, they treated people right. And they weren't, they didn't cause a bunch of problems. I'd rather have two of those than one, than one superstar. You, yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen to this. I had a business partner and you know, he was uh, just massively wealthy. Right. So yeah. huge amount, like massive trust. Okay. And uh, we would do business. And then, you know, af- after on the call, there would be some, you know, rather unpleasant, uh, rather unpleasant comments that would sometimes occur. And it would be like, what? Yeah. I thought you just said this about that person. And, and it was like, <laughs> you know, it also helped me understand that I'm, not all money is the same and not all relationships are the same. And that yeah. I also want to win win for not only our business, but also for the customers that we are interact with. So I don't know, yeah. just another one of those lessons that you see behind the scenes. I want to work with people who, who, uh, you know, are dedicated to their craft, but also who are just really amazing because that's where culture comes in. And, you know, I remember, right. you know, it's, it's like I said, it's the law of attraction yeah. and I want to make sure that we're surrounded by obviously winners, but winners ethically. Yeah. So. Anyway. Yeah, I think, well, and, and because it just causes so many problems. Like when, you know, you have to surround yourself with the right people who are doing the right things. It's, um, you know, because eventually like in life, you learn about doing the right thing just for the right reason, you know, just because it's right in and of itself. Yeah. Well, like it goes back to, I want to make sure when I call people, I want to make sure that I have all my relationships in order. Like I really yeah. don't let, I don't, I can't sleep at night if I don't have my relationships in order, you know? Right. Like I, I mean, you guys would be kind of <laughs> probably appalled at the amount of people that I text on a daily, as well as like, you know, I get these flurries of, you know, supportive type, uh, cause what you cast out is what you get back. So I enjoy right. doing that, yeah. but I want to make sure that I can still be able to do that with people in my life for all of life. Right. It's not just, and I understand that there are seasons that relationships come and then they go right. Just naturally, whether it's a transactional relationship or a relational relationship, it's like, yeah. you know, they come and go, but I just, I want that interaction to really be substantial. And they really think like, wow, Nathan was, he was on par. He did what he said he was going to do. He followed through in every sense of the word. Yeah. And, and that's, and that it kind of boils down to like how you work in a relationship with your spouse and how you work in a relationship with business partners in general is like, is getting to that point, right? Like, like they know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do and they know that you're going to do the right thing no matter what. Right. And that's like, kind of like the basis of all of this. Right. And, and they're, they, you're going to keep to the, you know, you, you mentioned like a, the obligations in a, in a marriage or like in a partnership, right. That those covenant obligations or whatever. And like, knowing that everybody is going to stick to those is like really trust building. Right. And so, and that's even with customers too. I love how, like one of the observations, so I've done a ton of podcasts. I know that you have too, but one of the observations that I've made, like interviewing a bunch of business owners is that the same things that make you successful, like in a marriage, make you successful in business, make you successful in sports, make you successful in, right. Like they just all like they're universal principles that you have to master. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And it's, it's wild how, how those things kind of come up. But, um, and, and, you know, and, and when I, when I made that observation, have you ever had that moment, Nathan, where you're like, obviously, like you come to this conclusion, you're like, obviously that's it. But like, why didn't I catch that? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cause we get distracted, you know, yeah. we get distracted with specific areas and it always comes down to uh, the, the mechanics and the principle. Right. Yeah. So think about, you know, human health. Uh, it's fats, carbs, proteins. It's exercise for 30 to 45 minutes a day at about 60. So 50 to 65 percent of your you know overall uh, heart rate. Right. Yeah. You maintain yeah. that you get proper blood circulation within your body. 
Now we've created so much extra on that. Like we got various uh, keto diet and we got high carb diet, <laughs> low carb diet, high protein diet, you know, and then we've got, you know, yeah. this person saying this and that and this and that. And then, uh, you know, I always reference health because it's something I know so well. And then also relationships, right? right. Well, what, what makes great relationships? Well, that's communication, that's proper expectations. And it, it really all boils down to communication, how you communicate to yourself through your own mind but also how you communicate uh, outwardly yeah. to other people, you know? Yeah. Communicating to, to, yeah, there's, um, there's that old, I haven't told this story in a long time, but there's that old Buddhist story of the guy who gets shot with an arrow. Right. Mm -hmm. And he gets shot with an, um, an arrow. And when he gets shot with an arrow, his friends rush to see him. And they're like, we need to get you to the hospital. We need to get you to the hospital. And he's like, not before I figured out who did this to me. And they're like, no, they're like, no, we need to get you to the hospital. And he's like, I need to know why this happened. Right. And he's telling himself all these stories and eventually, right. He dies. Right. Cause he, he dies. doesn't get to that. And so there's two, the two stories that the Buddhists or the two lessons, the Buddhists go after that. Right. Like, first of all, hear yourself. And like, second of all, what actually kills you is the story that you tell yourself about what happened, not what actually happened. Right. Cause if you are, if you're honest with yourself about the story, you're like, dude, look, I just got shot. Like I need to, I need to get help. And then once I heal, then I can set bound, you know, as I'm healing, I can set boundaries and I can set all of these things. And, um, but it's the story that you tell yourself, right? Like I need to know why this happened or like, it's because somebody didn't like me or is it, you know, when the story really like in that case, right. Didn't really matter at that time. You just needed to get help. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, so, you know, they would talk about that in, in the sense that like, there's two stories there's a story that actually happened in the story that you tell yourself about what actually happened. <laughs> True. And just taking action and, you know, yeah. I really, that's a good, that's a good analogy. I, I well, yeah. It, well, and, and like, obviously it's just an old story, but like, it just clear for me, that's when I learned about empathy. That story is just a perfect example of like, just tell yourself the truth. Just acknowledge what actually happened yeah. and then you can okay. start to heal and start to go, you know, anyway, uh, no, I, I love that one. But for you boss, I think that that is like really cool that you're helping couples with business because I feel like it's a big one out there, like money and business yeah. and how we're all going to like work together. Money, is, is business, huge. working together. It's been something. And yeah. uh, I would say that it's been something that we have gone through, right? And we're, right. you know, we just continue to put the tools around us to make sure that we can really speak and we can, we can be, we can be what we say we're being to help people through whatever they need. And, right. you know, within their relationships, it's like I said, when you, when you just have somebody that says, oh yeah, we're going to get into this business because, oh, it's great. You know, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. The market's there. Um, this the relational business isn't, Oh, it's a, you know, Oh, it's a great industry. You know, we're going to make a bunch <laughs> of money. Uh, no, it's not really that like that for us. Right. We'll lay our, we'll lay our life down for, you know, to save a marriage, you know, because we once knew how it happened or it can happen. So it's very frustrating when you're separated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you want to go above and beyond for couples and then, of course, on the other end, of course, like I've gone through various things within business, uh, you know, some would say it was a hostile takeover. So what I, you know, what I like to do is make sure that I help people understand the process of setting up proper boundaries within your company. So things like yeah. that don't happen. Right. You know, through the, through the various <laughs> uh, experiences that can propel you to go and speak to that crowd that really needs to hear that. So yeah. anyway, I, I appreciate you such having a, me on today. Absolutely. And such a great story again, like setting boundaries in a business, setting boundaries in a, you know, this is like those same things, right? Well, that's great, brother. I, I appreciate your time. You've been really generous and patient with the whole, all the technical difficulties, boss, but uh, tell us where everybody can, where everybody can get involved if they want to reach out to you for yeah. uh, any of your services. Yeah. Services. Just go to NathanBird.co. Very, okay. very simple. <laughs> NathanBird.co. Um, I've got everything there from the events that we do to the retreats that we have to uh, how to get started with health and wellness. 
Uh, we also have uh, business consulting. So if you want to take your business to the next level with your marketing or with actually your design, as well as any application uh, development or advisory services, we have that available at Growth Bounce. Um, yeah. But yeah, first start with just Nathan Bird and then you'll see the tree um, and the various options that you can have. Cool. Well, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you, Dalton.